Ordinary Simple and General Annuities Unit 10. Ooh. This is easily the most important unit of the whole course. This unit will have immediate impact on you, of course, because it's all over the final, uh, but it'll also impact your life, your life, your life. This chapter, this unit is extremely important. Anytime I bump into a politician, I go on about how really this should be in high school because everybody, everybody interacts with annuities. They are so important. They are so prevalent. They are such a, you know, common financial instrument. Everyone should know how annuities work. Every single one. Because every single person listening to this video right now will have at some point in their life, if they haven't already had one, an interaction or some experience with an annuity. So extremely, extremely important. If you forget the whole course, remember Unit 10 annuities. Okay. So they're extremely important. Mm, well, okay, let's let's learn some more. So in this particular unit uh, we're going to learn uh, the different types of annuities okay so there's a, a lot of flavors of annuities we'll talk a bit about a little of a, a little bit of them but it is a it is a big field okay so we we'll get a little taste uh, of of the more predominant ones and the the ones that the types of annuities you're most likely to interact with in the short term but there are many other types that we won't just simply won't have time to deal with so we have different types of annuities, and there, there's some flexibilities on these annuities. Uh, you can kind of set the term of the annuity, when the payment on the annuity happens, the conversion period, which we know from Unit 9 is an exciting time if you're getting interest, because that is when interest is converted to, pr to principal, and we start to get interest on the interest. Ooh, ooh, so exciting. I still get goosebumps every time I talk about it. Okay, So that conversion period is very important. Um, of course, we like it more as the recipient of the interest income, <laughs> not the pay the payer of the interest income. But we talked about that before. We'll also compute the future value of these. Uh, we're going to focus mostly on ordinary simple annuities, but once we get into the definitions of what these mysterious annuities are, you'll see that it's not a, a huge stretch to jump between the, the different uh, types. So we'll talk about future values, the present values of, of those annuities, the payments. How much am I paying on this car, on this mortgage payment? Ooh, you can kind of see. Ooh, hey, I, I have a car payment. If you have a car payment, you are the proud owner or interactor of an annuity. And we'll talk about the number of uh, periods uh, for, these, uh, for these annuities and then wrap it all up with uh, how, how do I calculate the interest rate. Okay, so lots of stuff in here. Okay, so annuity is extremely important. They impact my life. What the heck is an annuity, right? Okay, an annuity is a series of payments. Okay, so, you know, more than one. Equal size. First big point there, equal size. So every payment is of equal size. It's a little different than what we were experiencing when we talked about simple interest and we talked about compound interest, right? We, their payments were changing all over the place, right? We weren't bound for every payment to be the same. Sometimes they were, but they didn't have to be. Now when we deal with annuities, we're talking about a, a series of payments. They're all the same amount, same size. Second big thing is they are made at periodic intervals. Wow, periodic intervals. Well, what the heck does that mean? That just simply means every week you make a payment or get a payment. Every month you make a payment or get a payment. You know? Every two weeks you make a payment, you get a payment. You know, every quarter you make a payment or you get a payment. You know, every semi-annual period or every six months you make a payment or you get a payment. Or alternatively, every year, you know, you make a payment, you get a payment kind of thing. Okay? So periodic intervals just means the, when you get those payments, regular intervals, right? every week, every month, and so on. A little different than what we did when we were talking about, let's say, equivalent payments, where we 
those payments could happen whenever, right? Right? There, there, we weren't, there was no requirement for them to follow a certain regularity. Okay, so that, that distinguishes annuities in a major way there. The payment interval, so just some definitions here. Payment interval is a time between successive payments. The payment period is a length of time from the beginning of the first payment. And the term of the annuity is the interval to the end of the last payment interval. Okay. So we have payment periods, terms of annuities, payment intervals. So those are our basic things, but the key thing is annuities, payments are of equal size, occurring at regular intervals. Very important, because it's not like the question is going to scream at you, do an annuity calculation, right? You're going to get some parameters, you're going to get some inf information. You need to kind of say, okay, hmm, those payments are all of equal size? No, okay, not an annuity. Right? Or, hey, the payment changes, woo, could be a different annuity, right? So we've got to be tuned in to, to this, uh, this, this important, uh, that, that very first important bullet. Woo. Not hard, but we, uh, we, we will be applying it quite a bit. And when you get into the, uh, you know, the real world uh, where there's real money involved, oh boy, it becomes very important. Okay, so some examples of annuities. Mm -hmm, these important. Residential mortgages, you ever want to own your own house? Well, unless you go in there, uh, you know, paying cash or, you know, cutting, cutting a check, you're probably getting a mortgage. If you're getting a mortgage, that, my friends, is an annuity. If you get a car loan, a car lease, that is an annuity. If you go in there, uh, you've got a student loan and you go to repay that student loan, as a taxpayer, we really hope that that works out for you. We really hope to see you pay those things back. That will become an annuity. You'll pay a certain amount, uh, regular intervals, the payment will be equal, the intervals will be the same. Boom, boom, boom. Annuities, annuities, you have yourself an annuity. Okay, so you can kind of see that, holy moly, man, I, I either hope to have my own house, I hope to have my own car, or I already have my own house or my own car, or I know somebody who does, and so on. Hey. You've interacted with an annuity. And if you don't really know how the annuity structure works, that means you calculated those payments blind. And you think, of how much a house? Right? You, go, you, you get a $300,000 mortgage on a house, and you don't know how an annuity is working. Holy cow, right? You just blindly agreed to a payment structure, and you have no idea where the numbers came from. Scary, isn't it? Right? This is, can be scary, this lack of knowledge of an annuity. Okay, uh, so there's a couple of some types of annuities, and, and we won't get into every single type. Uh, it's just not enough time. Uh, so we have simple and general annuities, which we will interact with. Right? We will work with that. Uh, ordinary annuities and annuities do. We will mostly focus in on the ordinary annuities, but annuities do are, are really easy to work with, and sometimes annuities do are can be more uh, more applied, uh, especially if you're talking about uh, car leases tend to be in annuities do. Uh, deferred annuities, you know, you know, you see those uh, those ads. Do not pay until 2028 or something like that, and then all of a sudden you're paying a whole bunch of payments after that. That is an example of a deferred annuities. We won't necessarily get into be able to work with that a whole lot. We'll work. We'll we'll, we'll do little calculations in that particular field. It's a sort of, sort of a blend of the Unit 9 compound interest along with this Unit 10 annuity stuff. So it's, it's a merger of the two. Perpetuities, um, won't get into that. They're actually not that hard. You, will, you may, if you ever take a, another uh, a corporate finance class, you'll see uh, perpetuities mentioned in there. And annuities certain and contingent annuities. Uh, these are also annuities that uh, types that you probably will interact in the real world, but uh, they're a little bit more of a complicated structure and we won't have a chance to get into them. Okay, so we have our simple and general annuities, which we know we're going to focus in on uh, quite a bit. Uh, a simple annuity, uh, and this is important, is a conversion period. So that's where we convert interest into principal. So the compounding period is the same length as the payment intervals, okay? So we, uh, if we're compounded weekly, our payments are also weekly. If we're compounded monthly, our payments are also monthly, okay? So where the compounding period and the payment interval, the lengths of each of those, 
uh, are the same, we have a simple annuity. Okay. So, for instance, uh, it depends. The, the loan structures can be pretty, uh, pretty flexible in, in this regard. Sometimes when there's monthly payments, it's also compounded monthly. It doesn't have to be. Okay. But if they're the same, then we're just dealing with a simple annuity. This is, the, the calculation of it is not very complicated when we're using the technology, fancy word for calculator, uh, whether it's a simple or a general, but we want to be able to recognize the two. In a general annuity, which we'll see in um, the second set of uh, annuity slides, uh, the conversion period and the payment period are not equal. So if the conversion period, let's say it's compounded, uh, the interest is compounded uh, semi-annually, but the payments are monthly or weekly or some other interval. Okay? So the conversion period, the payment interval, not the same. We see this a lot in residential mortgages. Right? Typically in a residential mortgage, the interest is compounded semi-annually. So every six months, but the payment structure, pay whenever, right? You want to pay every week? You pay every week, right? You want to pay every two weeks? Pay every two weeks. You want to pay every month? Pay every month, right? All right. So there's a lot of flexibility in when you pay, but typically interest still remains compounded semi-annually. So there, that's an example of a general annuity. Uh, ordinary annuities and annuities due. In an ordinary annuity, payments are made at the end of each period. Uh, annuities due, payments are made at the beginning. Okay. Uh, examples of which many loan payments. You go uh, if you go to buy a car. Uh, typically, the first payment is due at the end of the month or the end of the week or whatever payment period you uh, you've negotiated. Okay. If you're talking about um, lease payments, same car, but you're leasing it. That's an example of annuity due. Typically, those payments are due at the beginning of every payment period. Okay, and a lot of equipment leases follow. Leases in general follow that kind of uh, convention, if you will. Again, with the technology and being able to quickly and easily use a calculator, shifting from an ordinary annuity to an annuity due is not really a big deal. To be quite honest with you. Okay. But we will focus uh, in our course on ordinary annuities. Uh, deferred annuities, again, like I said before, sometimes you know you do not pay until some other period, and then you pay in regular intervals uh, an equal amount. So it becomes an annuity, but it's not an annuity yet. There's a deferral period. There's a period of time before the annuity begins. So it's just a deferred annuity. Like I said, it's just a combination of compound interest and annuity calculations. Nothing really super complicated, to be quite honest with you. Uh, perpetuities, uh, that's where the payments uh, continue forever. Uh, perpetuities sort of were in vogue oh, a very, very, very long time ago. And now with really low interest rates, uh, a lot of governments are you know, scratching their head uh, thinking, hmm, you know, maybe this gives us uh, perpetuity, never having to pay anything back, because realistically, let's face it, governments don't pay it back anyway, right? They just roll it over, so why should we pretend? Uh, and so perpetuities are uh, kind of starting to make a little bit of a comeback. Uh, and I think, I think if I recall correctly, and uh, you can fact check me on this, I'll put it out in the video for all to hear, but I think the UK has uh, issued some Gilts, you know, very small issuance of them uh, more recently. Okay, but payment just goes on forever. You'll see that in other courses, but really easy peasy to calculate that stuff. Uh, and then the, the other two ty types of annuities that we won't be able to cover because they, you know, they're a little bit more complicated sometimes. Uh, annuity certain uh, and contingent annuities, especially the contingent annuities, okay? So if both the beginning date and ending date of an annuity are known, uh, so there's a fixed term, call that an annuity certain. We, everything, is, everything is known about it, right? And that's what we deal with for the most part. The other one is contingent annuity. So for instance, uh, life insurance premiums, uh, pension payments. So my uh, Grant McEwen uh, University pension plan pays you know, a certain amount every, every month until my spouse passes away, okay? So I die. My spouse continues to get uh, money until she passes away. When will that happen? Don't know, right? Um, 
So it's contingent on something happening, contingent upon death in this case. And then life insurance uh, works kind of the same way too, right? You know, you get your check, you get your check when? I don't know, when I die. When are you going to die? <laughs> Hopefully not soon, but I really don't know when that's going to happen, right? So we have, we have that. Okay, so those we won't call. This can be, uh, I act, the actual science uh, folks really get uh, big into the contingent annuities and probability until death and given that you've died, the probability or the time until uh, your, your spouse dies and so on, right? So those, are, those can involve some complicated uh, mathematics. Okay, so ordinary simple annuity, which is what we'll primarily focus on. It just means that the payments are made at the end of every payment interval, hence the word ordinary, and the interest conversion period and the payment interval are the same, hence the simple part. Uh, we will relax the simple part later. Uh, for now, we just keep it the same, just so we can get a sense for how everything works before we start to make it too complicated. Okay, a picture, love pictures, so just to kind of see what does it look like. We have uh, interest rate, 6% per annum, compounded annually, five payments of $1,000 at the end of every year, and so today, now, and then in a year, at the end of the year one, so in, in one year, we get $1,000, end of year two, we get $1,000, end of year three, we get $1,000, end of year four, we get $1,000, end of year five, we get a thousand. So you can kind of see regular intervals, in this case every year, uh, same amount every at every interval, and in this case a thousand dollars. Boom! We have ourselves an annuity. And so ends the intro part portion of annuities. Thank you for listening and stay tuned. More is coming up.